I just want to take you through really quickly um, our our vision, what it is we uh, what we see, and and uh, the huge opportunities that um, that are out there and available with respect to bows and you and your customers. Um, so many people's lives already have Bose products in them, whether they're headsets or Bluetooth speakers or, or whatever it may be. Um, how, do we, how do we seamlessly connect those, those creature comforts to the workplace? And since those things already exist, how do we tie that all together and, and create a, a less frustrating experience when connecting on Zoom or uh, Teams or WebEx or whatever it may be? And part of it, it might be just be using the technology you're already familiar with and a brand you're already familiar with. Um, so Bose work is an entire initiative and roadmap ahead of us of uh, connecting those, those current solutions and other future solutions. Um, so being able to start a meeting at home uh, as we all are today, and then moving into your vehicle, uh, conducting your, your meeting still while in the vehicle, traveling to the office, and then hopping into a particular, maybe a, a huddle space or a, or a boardroom, whatever it is. But all along the way, you're able to transfer that meeting from one device to the other, all while staying connected with super intelligible audio, super clean um, uh, what you're hearing and what you're sending to your uh, meeting participants on the far end. And then also getting into those huddle spaces or, or boardrooms and being able to then fully see the image. Um, that is the overall view and, and sort of roadmap for what Bo's work is about. Um, I'd like to just quickly mention on the personal conferencing uh, front, we, we, um, we have some pretty incredible technology and years and years of research in noise reduction headphone technology, uh, but to take it a step further, um, the Bose 700UC uh, conferencing headsets are, are truly an incredible experience. Um, one of the things that really sets this particular product apart from other things on the market is an eight microphone array system. Um, uh, four elements are dedicated to reducing any of the noise uh, that is in your environment, and then the other four are dedicated to delivering highly intelligible speech to the participant on the other end of the call. Um, so not only are you enjoying noise reduction in your environment, your uh, other participants are receiving some truly, uh, truly incredible audio quality to the far end. Um, the, um, let me just mention really quick, part of this um, gives you a step up from where we used to be with the QC35s or older technology. Either noise reduction in your headset was all on or all off. With the 700s, we actually have 11 steps of granular uh, noise reduction. So whatever you're more comfortable with, we give you a lot more flexibility with the 700s. Um, and then the other part to this is we actually have a dedicated dongle, uh, a, pair blue, a paired Bluetooth dongle that gives you some extended range. So when you need to step away from your desktop computing system or your laptop or uh, your phone, for example, although your phone is not going to use your USB dongle, but for your desktop PC or laptop, we can get we can we can take a few steps away and, and be assured that we're going to remain connected. That Bluetooth dongle also gives us visual feedback as to when our microphone is muted, when we're actually in a, in a meeting. So there's some visual cues that help us know uh, whether we're whether we're muted or not muted and actually in an active meeting. Um, these are a certified Microsoft Teams device, obviously works with Google Meet and obviously compatible with Zoom. So that's just a little something I wanted to, to bring to your attention today before we get into the meat and potatoes of the VB1. Um, another quick little thing to just bring to your attention is on a bigger scale in those integrated boardrooms are a couple of packages we have. And I'm not going to go into too much detail today because I want to I want to get on to uh, talking about the VB1. But we do also have these larger integrated solutions uh, that are also team certified and compatible with Zoom. Um, the ES1 solution uh, features a Bose Edge Maxium 180, uh, our EX processor, and then our, our power amplifier. 
And then we have teamed up with Sennheiser and the TCC2 Team Connect microphone. On the DS4, it's everything is the same with the exception of the loudspeaker solution. In some cases, Edge Max may or may not be the right fit and you may need to use a traditional conical ceiling distributed uh, loudspeaker solution. So the both of these are actually listed under the team's Microsoft certified solution um, partner page. So if you have those larger rooms that need to be a little more complex, uh, just know that we have those solutions available um, and provide an incredible amount of value to your customers. So uh, before I jump into the VB1, are there any quick questions on the headsets or our larger integrated solutions? All right, let's hop into uh, the reason why we're here today. And that is just to take a look at the Bose Video Bar VB1. Um, this is of course a Microsoft Team certified device. And we want to hop in really quickly to start taking a look at what, what really uh, sets this apart um, from the rest of the, the competition. And it all kind of starts with our microphone section. Um, this, uh, this, this is a, a challenging um, uh, part. This is a, I'm sorry, a challenging um, sort of uh, 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 aspect of these huddle spaces or team rooms uh, where you have a, a sort of maximum distance in terms of what your microphone pickup is, is capable of with our, our competition, what we find is in order for them to be able to pick up audio, intelligible audio out to 20 feet or so, you need to use um, a, uh, a tabletop microphone extension, which typically are a, an omnidirectional microphone, which means that now it's gonna pick up all the, the paper rustling, the finger tapping on the desktop and so on and so forth, which can definitely distract from a productive meeting. The, um, uh, and, and it also requires some additional installation, um, which will obviously drive up the cost of what should seem to be a fairly inexpensive turnkey solution. Um, so the added install uh, of, of some of these other devices. The Bose VB1 actually features a six element microphone array that allows us to uh, either use a dynamic beam forming um, uh, configuration or a static beam, con uh, beam configuration. In dynamic, we find in these sort of larger spaces, the huddle spaces to the slightly bigger, what's called a team room, um, these microphones are highly focused uh, microphone beams that uh, automatically and very fast or quickly adjust to any talker that is in the room, while also making sure that it, it does a great job of, because of how narrow these beams are, uh, it, it provides an an excellent um, experience to the far end because it's not also picking up the unwanted acoustics of the room, which is one of the biggest challenges in a lot of these spaces we see today. So highly focused uh, beam, uh, beam forming microphone technology in the VB1 in these slightly bigger rooms out to 20 feet. And we'll, you'll get an opportunity to hear that today um, when I demonstrate that in a minute. Um, Eric, is there anything else that you would like to add to uh, the microphone uh, section of uh, in this larger space? Um, obviously, you know, we are always working to uh, provide um, least amount of uh, background noise um, so that we're just focusing on that. So um, like the competitive products, we are doing an amount of uh, noise cancellation it goes on um, as well as the um, trying to isolate just speaking voices with the dynamic beams, which you're gonna, um, which you've already sort of talked about, but we'll show in action too. Um, they are um, they are constantly evaluating the whole space. So there's six loud, the six microphones. So it's all, all of the aiming is done via um, the algorithm that's. Focus, focusing the, the beam on the talkers, so. 
The other uh, aspect of the VB1 is, is to get into these tighter spaces, such as uh, the huddle space um, or even the meeting booth, uh, where you may have a doorway of activity, people walking by to the copy machine uh, or just, just typical hallway traffic. Something that the VB1 actually uh, has and employs is an awesome feature called the exclusion zones, which Eric will get a chance to show you in real time how this works. But um, it allows us to point a, a dead zone or a null in a particular direction to reduce uh, uh, the amount of unwanted audio coming into that conference or to that meeting. So this is a good example of using that exclusion zone, uh, pointing it toward a doorway, but um, the remaining participants are still uh, perfectly intelligible without issue. Uh, and as I said, the meeting booth, um, this is where we will begin to use the static beam forming configuration versus a, a dynamic, just because these are seats that don't have much room to move. Uh, they're pretty stationary. So we can fix the beam on those, uh, those particular seats uh, while reducing the amount again of unwanted audio coming in from the, uh, the walkway or the hallway there. So that's an example of using the static beam configuration um, of the VB1 microphone array. Are there any questions on the microphone section before we dive into the camera? Excellent. We'll hop right in here to the 4K uh, Ultra HD Bose designed camera. Uh, this features 115 degree sorry. horizontal view. I'm sorry, was there a question? Yeah, there is one. Brian Dillon has a question, if you don't mind. Sure. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, Brian. Yeah. All right. I'm not Brian. I'm one of many. Oh, okay. okay. Um, adjusting the mics, how easy is that? Can my highly uh, specialized technicians do it? Or do I need a DSP guy to come in to do it? I just wanna know if it's something that my guy is gonna be installing the system and make those adjustments on the fly right there on the spot. Yes, sir. So Eric is gonna actually show you how simple it is. Hey, Andrew. Um, it, it, is, it, is a, it is a very uh, simple, intuitive process to make those adjustments and configurations. Great question. So we'll jump right into that here in just a second so that you can physically see how that's done. Um, it couldn't be easier. So um, great question. Uh, so we'll, let's fly through this stuff so we can get to Eric showing that stuff off. Um, so real quickly, uh, the field of view, 115 degree uh, horizontal, meaning, you know, I can be very close to the VB1, especially in those meeting booth situations where you're 12 inches from the wall. Um, can we get everybody in the shot uh, and in the meeting? So that's a huge advantage of our, of our technology. The other thing, um, of course, is uh, with auto framing in some of these bigger, in some of these bigger rooms, as people come in, um, the camera begins to make sure that everybody is in the shot. Um, and this is not to be confused with auto tracking, okay? This is about making sure that everybody is in the meeting, is in the shot. So uh, if there's only two people in the room and they're near the front, the VB1 will automatically adjust and put everybody in frame. As people come into the meeting, the VB1 will adjust to make sure as the meeting grows, the shot grows as well. So our auto framing is, is, um, is uh, right on par with, uh, with the majority of, of our competitors. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty basic and straightforward with auto framing. Uh, one of the biggest differences, however, with, uh, with the VB1 that you will find, and we're going to show you today, is how clear the image is out to 20 feet. This is a big piece because in, in a lot of these rooms, a dedicated, um, a very expensive uh, PTZ camera is what is generally required in order to achieve those images that are on a whiteboard or a flipboard chart that's on the other side of the room. Now, again, this is an all-in-one device with digital PTZ but getting you a, an opportunity to see text at a, at a particular or common size that would be on a whiteboard out to 20 feet is a huge advantage. 
uh, with the VB1. Um, so that's just another little piece of information that we're in and, and a little feature we're going to show you here in just a second as well. Um, before we go on from the camera, are there any quick questions on the camera section of the VB1? So Bose obviously is known for room filling sound in a tiny small package and uh, the VB1 is no exception. Um, we are employing some uh, proprietary technology such as our racetrack driver. It allows us to get a lot of surface area into a tight compact area. Um, and so that means more natural sounding voice reproduction, as well as for anybody who wants to use that space to just do some personal work and maybe listen to some of their own music. It's a beautiful sounding loudspeaker solution. And again, this is its primary function is, is for these huddle spaces. Um, but being able to use it uh, and fill a room with sound uh, is no, uh, is, is no um, something that Bose obviously is very familiar with knowing how to do. Um, just a couple of little pieces of um, unique information here is that we've taken those drivers and yawed them in uh, towards the center to provide even better localization or uh, making sure that the image and everything is, is super focused, which helps with intelligibility. So um, just those little tweaks that we've made uh, really do provide an incredible experience in the room itself. So, and then obviously uh, along with having a, a, a loudspeaker solution that's gonna fill the room, um, the, uh, the camera suspension system um, is very dialed in. So as the volume is turned up to you know, cover a room of 10 people, uh, you're not gonna get a bunch of vibration in your camera. Um, Eric, anything you wanna add to the playback uh, 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 section here? Um, just that we really um, did a lot of testing on this because we found this to be um, one of the weaknesses of most of the competitive products is they, they sound decent for speech perhaps, but um, we wanted to make sure that we had a, a sound bar that, that uh, lived up to our standards of um, music reproduction as well. So um, the, the ported cabinet has a decent base for this size of a loudspeaker. Um, and um, Unique tech, I think you are probably already covered the, the camera suspension in there. I'm sorry, I was typing a message in to somebody, um, uh, which, is, which is pretty cool. So even at high SPL levels or high for this, when it's pushing a lot of air, you don't get vibration. Um, I've listened against a couple of the other um, competitive products and uh, music wise, um, we really stand out. Um, so, um, not that that's obviously the key thing, but if you're doing program playback or just hanging out in the room and you want to stream music from your phone to it, um, it's, it has that advantage. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. So um, let's take a quick look. Um, if there's no questions, don't, please don't hesitate to, to jump in here and ask questions. Um, uh, at all, not not a formal thing here, but um, don't hesitate to jump and in. We'll um, I'll deal with the we'll deal with these uh, deployment and and configuration questions when we get into the software here in just a minute. So yes, yes, uh, something that is very important to mention here, of course, this is a big piece of all, all of this, which is our mounting options. This is a very uh, very low profile design, very compact. It's only twenty seven inches wide. 1.9 inches tall and very important, only 3.8 inches deep when installed with the included wall bracket, which means that it meets just about every ADA requirement um, in, in, any, uh, in any local municipality. So it's an also, I mean, it's, it's ultra compact, sleek design. Um, so the mounting bracket that is included in the box allows you to mount it above the display like you see in this particular shot or below the display, um, which you can see in this particular use case. And then also the included bracket has a tabletop stand that you can just drop it right in there, put it on a cadenza or a, a, or a bookshelf, and you're able to quickly start conducting meetings. So mounting options are awesome. Um, 
And here's a quick little animation of how quick and easy it is to do any of those. So it's a spring hinged uh, bracket that can, like I said, be used in the tabletop stand or the wall bracket, which is two screws. You drop it on and there's nothing to tighten afterwards because it's all spring hinged. <clears throat> One additional accessory is the video mount kit, which is uh, which works with just about every vessel mount um, uh, option that's on the market. So to make your install even that much easier uh, and make sure that the VB1 is level with the display, which then is level with your room. Those are the mounting options. There are some accessories uh, coming, such as a mud ring uh, to dress your cable. Um, and was there any other accessory, Eric, that I'm missing? I don't think. Uh, not, not at this time. So uh, are there any questions on the mounting uh, uh, of the VB1? Excellent. So getting into uh, what makes the VB1 simple, both from a user's perspective, but then of course, uh, in just a second, from, a, uh, from your perspective in deploying the VB1 itself. So single cable, uh, this is a USB 2.0, 3.0, 3.1 compatible device. It ships with a, sorry about that folks. Uh, it is a, um, it does ship with a, uh, a 12 foot or 16 foot USB 2.0 cable in the box. Of course, USB 3 cables are available. Um, we've got a Bose branded USB cable if you wish. Uh, in the box, it also comes with a USB C to USB A adapter. Um, so you're, you're, you're basically ready to rock and roll. Uh, as long as you've got a laptop, you can get into a, into a call very quickly right out of the box. Um, the included HDMI port on the VB1 uh, provides in-room display. So with a single USB cable, I can capture video, audio, audio playback, and in-room display uh, all over USB. Um, the one little piece to that is on PC. It requires the, um, the USB link adapter driver, um, and you, you're set to go with in-room display. If you have a dedicated CPU in your room, um, the, you know, obviously best practice is to use the HDMI port on the CPU or the, the, the PC itself, uh, and then allow the VB1 to just simply capture your audio video and then obviously provide audio playback. That is the real basics of the USB connectivity, single cable USB connectivity. Eric's going to cover a little bit more. Uh, there's an RJ45 connection. Uh, for network uh, 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 for ne network connectivity, as well as an eighth inch uh, stereo uh, uh, or uh, TRS uh, input for auxiliary analog input that you would take out of a uh, TV display or a, um, a cable box, for example, should you want to bring in program material um, into the VB1 that way. So you do have an option of bringing in analog audio. Lastly, on the connectivity side of things is Bluetooth. Um, this does provide true bridging. So a if you're in a conference call with uh, uh, a group and somebody calls in or you want to bring somebody in, um, dial them or receive the phone call, connect them, uh, simply connect them with the VB1 and they're actually bridged into um, to the conference call through the VB1. Uh, you can also play, as we've already stated, um, just stream your music for enjoyment. Um, and something else that is being worked on, um, it, it's, it's in this slide, it's not currently implemented right now, but um, in future, uh, something we are working on in the future is Chirp to uh, ensure that um, if you did bridge, bridge a call um, and you forget to disconnect and you walk away from the VB1, uh, Chirp will automatically disconnect the call um, and no unwanted information is shared in the, the conference call. So that's coming. Any questions on the connectivity of the VB1? And if there are chats, Eric, you're watching the chat, right? I am. Uh, we will, I'm going to just try to answer some of these uh, verbally because it's a lot of typing. So Okay, okay. Uh, so this is where I'm going to hand it off to Eric. Um, he's going to show us the device management, 
how we configure the VB1, and we're going to do some demonstrations for you. So I'm going to stop let's, sharing my screen. Let's try to answer some of these questions first. So I'll go through these, Aaron. You can track along if you see anything, too. So um, um, we are going to show uh, video at a, at a distance. It's not quite 20 feet. I think your wall, Aaron, is about 15 feet, something Correct. like that. Correct. Um, as far as 4K, um, the, the video resolution is going to be um, uh, controlled by the, your pipeline over the internet. So you aren't going to be able to see 4K video resolution. And um, I apologize for the color on mine. I'm noticing my light and it's really dark here today. So my light in my room is kind of weird, but and I'm looking kind of red. But um, the yeah, 4K video resolution would be between your computer and the external display if you're going to the VB1 and then out HDMI uh, to the display. Um, and that's dependent on um, the type of USB cable that you use. Um, so for 4K video, um, well, we compress down, I guess it might still be 4K even with a USB 2, but it's going to be um, higher compression. It's going to rely on your CPU to uh, compress more. Um, we'll talk about the, the deployment uh, in larger scenarios here in a minute. Um, HDMI. Uh, um, so I, you know, I would say as far as mounting to the wall, the side, the, I don't think the head size of the HDMI is an issue. Flexibility of the cable would be the bigger thing that I would say. Um, I was just playing around with one yesterday and I had a pretty heavy cable plugging in and it's kind of maybe difficult to get the bend out of it, but the head size should not be an issue. Um, this. So yeah, so USB um, carries yeah. both video and um, audio and, and all your conferencing stuff. So that was our single cable solution. Um, if you, um, but it does require that you enable um, uh, display link on the computer. So if for some reason your customer uh, can't install the display link drivers or they don't want to use display link, then you would need to use a uh, separate HDMI cable to the display and uh, run two cables kind of the, the uh, traditional way. Uh, also, there was a question about uh, what competitive products that we compared against. Um, we've compared against the uh, Poly Studio, um, the Logitech, um, which Logitech model is it? Not the latest, uh, not the newest Rally uh, model, but the Meet up. Meetup. Meetup, yes. The, yeah, meet mm -hmm. meet mm -hmm. um, the Crestron um, um, bar that's quite large, um, which I don't remember the model number for that one. Yeah, the those are the, you see. Yeah. yeah, those are the primary competitive products that we've uh, compared against. Um, we have some... Numerous issues with display link deployment. Uh, and some USB cables. Yeah, so that's um, that's part of the reason why we are shipping USB cables uh, with the product. So it comes with a, a five meter USB three cable with a um, USB A adapter, um, and then there's also a one meter USB three point oh cable available. Um, I might have missed the 15, the, the three, the five meter cable five meters is not USB two. three, but it is USB C is what I meant to say. Correct. Yeah. Um, USB C with an adapter. The, um, the one meter cable is a USB C cable that is USB 3.1 rated. Um, so, and then we have a, a list of recommended uh, extenders on our website. So if you have a customer who needs something longer, um, we have extenders that we've tested with. So just take a look through there, Aaron, while I go through some of the other stuff then. So I'm gonna turn my camera off here for a minute so that you can see it in this 
configuration app. Eric will be answering your question, Michael, regarding uh, configuring and um, managing multiple units simultaneously instead of individually connecting to each right. one. So Eric is going to show that in just uh, the, in just a second here. So can you see the uh, the configuration app on your screen now? Yes. All right. Um, so there was a question about admin rights to run this. You should not need any admin rights to actually run the software. You probably will need admin rights to install it. Um, and we have the, um, this app is available for both Mac and PC. Um, you do have a password. Um, it's very generic when it ships, the, the unit ship with a, a capital B Bose, Bose, uh, one through three um, exclamation point uh, that can be changed once you get in. So you can use this app to um, configure everything about the BB1. So you'll see right here a uh, firmware version. If there was this is assuming that you are connected to the internet, if there was a newer version of firmware, it would show up here and have a, a button linked to update the firmware. Um, other things that are just uh, in the general configuration, you can set up user access so you can, you can disable things like display link. So if you don't want to have display link enabled so that it isn't checking for that, you can turn that off. Um, and then if you don't want wireless enabled on the unit so that nobody can connect via wireless or Bluetooth, you can disable those as well. So if you're in a secure environment and you can't have any Bluetooth or wireless, you can disable those. Um, profile is nice because you can create a profile. So if you have multiple rooms that are the same or similar, um, once you go through and you make all your settings, you can do a save as and save a profile that you can then load. And you can do that on multiple units simultaneously, which I'll show you in the um, uh, management app. Um, GPI is, um, if you want to enable a fire alarm mute, you can set that up in here and change your, the active state, whether it's high or low. Um, pretty just general settings here, time zone and such. Um, and you can give each one a name, um, list where it's at, building. This is great when you have a whole building full of rooms with these in there. Uh, camera settings. So it's trying to think about this. So here you can see the um, camera where you can adjust your create presets that are recallable both from the remote control as well as the uh, mobile app. So the mobile app on your phone or uh, tablet mimics what is on the remote control. Um, and when you walk in, it'll search and see if you have a room. Uh, the mobile app uses low power Bluetooth for connectivity. Um, and so it will see the device. If you disable Bluetooth though on the unit, then you would not be able to use the, the mobile app. So in the auto framing, you can enable it. Um, and then you have the ability to turn it on and off. So we were talking about this, so auto framing um, the one thing we have to keep in mind is that this is not um, like tracking, like it's going to pan and, and tilt right along with me as I move. Auto framing is evaluating the whole space that's in the camera view and determining whether there's anybody who's out of the picture. So if I move over here and come off the camera, in a few seconds, it should determine that there's a person that's not really in the image anymore. Um, and it'll adapt and shift over here um, like that. Now I'm really kind of out of the image because I moved too far. And then when I move back, it will eventually recenter and come back, but it's not instantaneous. We're taking samples and it's a, about four seconds, four or five seconds until it readjusts uh, to catch everybody. The point is to make sure that if somebody walks into the room um, that they don't 
stay out of the picture. And then you can always um, return and go back to uh, like um, one of your presets. Um, if I hit the uh, home button and it'll go back to my preset. Image, you can come in. Um, right now, I'm just set up with our uh, default image settings, uh, but you can tweak them, So, um, which I probably should have before this call, but um, you can set it for your room depending on whether you have different light settings or whatever. So let's talk about the microphone. Aaron was mentioning uh, microphone and I'll go larger now so you can see things better. So by default, um, you were asking about setup. It ships in dynamic mode um, and you basically don't have to do anything and it should just work. Um, but you have the ability to come in here and configure things. So the first thing you might choose to do would be to like change your exclusion zones. And it always comes with these two default exclusion zones to set up that you don't want certain you know, side areas to be in there. Um, as I move around, you can notice that the white line is tracking with me and then it will assign a beam there when it determines that uh, I'm a speaker or a person speaking. Um, and then it'll eventually move you know, another beam as I moved over here. It's not just using um, audible sound, but it's actually the algorithm is also determining whether it's a speech pattern, a person speaking versus just some kind of noise. And so it will always be moving these beams around um, to find the, the active talkers. If we want to add an exclusion zone, um, you can add another exclusion zone. And I will show you the effect of this um, when, we, um, when you have an exclusion zone. So I'm talking right now. I'm not in exclusion zone. I've now set an exclusion zone here and I'm talking so it doesn't put a beam uh, where I'm at because I'm inside the exclusion zone. If I move over here so that I'm outside of the exclusion zone now, you should be able to hear the difference. Um, since I can't tell what you guys are hearing, uh, Aaron, maybe you can at least give me some feedback as to uh, whether that uh, was effective or not. Yes. Yeah, so a significant reduction uh, in, your, uh, in your overall volume while in the exclusion zone. Good. So then also we can use static beams. So if you have a room like the small fixed huddle booth, you can, and you know where your talkers are going to be all the time, you can come in here and you can um, move your beams and you can delete beams so you can um, you know, maybe you only have two people, so you don't want to uh, have a lot of beams. So now, you know, anything outside of there, I should now, there's no exclusion zone, but I'm outside of a static beam, so it should be um, dropping in level as well. It's not quite as noticeable as the exclusion zone, but overall intelligibility, of course, as yeah. you get further away. Now, Michael did ask, um, uh, the exclusion, so the exclusion zone does not completely eliminate this spoken word, uh, spoken voice. Correct. Uh, to answer that question, yeah. So that's because the other, the other beams are still picking up. Now, I, I suppose if I totally exclude things, uh, essentially everywhere is an exclusion zone. Um, it may be pretty well reduced now. It's pretty, it's pretty quiet. There's still some room acoustics and, and reflections that the VB1 is trying to determine and decide. Yeah, so it's just attenuation. It's not total um, elimination, but um, the more reverberant your room, the more excess um, sound you will have, even, even if you're in an exclusion zone. But it's uh, greatly reduced in, in those areas. Um, so as far as ease of setup, I would say that most of the time you'll probably just leave them in dynamic mode um, because it's um, very effective of moving these beams where you need them to be um, and you don't miss talkers. Um, it's particularly helpful when you have multiple people speaking. Um, 
So, uh, so essentially nothing to do out of the box, except maybe set these side exclusion zones or any other exclusion zone that you'd need to set. So that is the audio configuration. Um, so you do have um, the ability to, you know, set these things as well, like mute access and such. And there are meters in here, so you can see what's going on. So you can see that my microphone is picking me up. Um, I'm speaking. It's going out the USB for my Teams connection. Um, if Aaron talks. Hey, hello. Now you can see it coming in on the USB. So this is just... This is mostly a uh, troubleshooting type tool. So if you don't feel like something's working or you don't hear something, you can um, use the meters. So this is cool and it's fine if you have, um, um, and here's where you could set up your network settings. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, um, and we do have a full SNMP uh, document for, um, uh, controlling these via third party. It's quite extensive. Um, there are more things that you can do via the SNMP than you can do in here itself um, that you can set up to control live. So pretty powerful for uh, control of things. But anyhow, um, what I was going to say is this is kind of cool for uh, setting up one device. But as Michael kind of would ask before, um, what about when you have multiple um, multiple rooms? So that's where the Bose Work Management app comes into play. So I'm going to open that up here and we'll share that. So this is what the work management app looks like. So you'll notice in here, um, oh, I should have had one connected to my network. Um, I'm gonna walk, well, you don't see me anyhow. I'm gonna uh, give me just a second. I'm gonna plug my VB1 into my network. So this is, uh, Eric, you're hard wiring, correct? You're using RJ45. Correct. Okay. I suppose I could have connected to wireless, but um, for some reason, my Bluetooth button started flashing. I don't know why, but do you still hear me? We I still do. Good? Okay. Yep. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. So now you saw this unit pop online. Um, so all of these other units are um, units that have been connected to my network before. Um, they have red lights, so they're not actually connected right now. Um, in here, let me hide this. So if you were to select one of these, you or multiple ones, um, you can basically do everything that you would do in that um, configuration app um, you can do in here and you can set it for multiple devices simultaneously. So if you wanna update firmware, you can update multiple units at the same time from one location. You can see the status of all these units um, and when you give them friendly names like the building and the floor and, and room, you can know, um, oh, that unit's gone offline and it's not working for some reason, something like that. You can also check and see what firmware version all of the units are running and the Bluetooth state. So you have full access to these. And this is where it would be really powerful to be able to have a um, preset file or a profile that you can load to these units um, and deploy it all from the IT office. Um, pretty simple um, interface, um, but gives you kind of everything that you need to be able to, to do for these units. So um, before I close this, any, any questions on the 
management app. Can you group devices by location, by floor, by state, et cetera, to make it easier to manage per location and time zone? Yes. So as far as time well, zone, so you're only <laughs> no, going to see devices that are in the same um, uh, network. So um, I think currently we aren't going to see um, devices across multiple uh, subnets. Um, and um, I believe that I'm pretty sure that's the case. And so, but grouping, you could you could certainly uh, name them by building, um, and then you can sort by by building or sort by floor or, or however you want to do that as far as kind of orga organizing them. And then you also have the columns uh, function in the top right there that allows you to to organize uh, True. your yes. view even more uh, tailored. Well, you can turn off some of these things if you don't yeah. want them. Yeah. What else is in here? Can you save settings and upload to another unit? Yes. Uh, uh, these all have to be on the same subnet to manage across my uh, my WLAN. Um, that is my understanding right now. I have asked about okay. that, um, and I believe that is the current scenario. Um, yeah, so so if a New York office is in, in one VLAN and LA is in another, can I manage all in one pane of glass? I need to check on that. Okay. I don't know the definite answer. Yeah. Good question, Michael. We'll take that down. Um, so that's the, I mean, that's the software that we have. Uh, I didn't show the mobile app because I don't have my phone here on my desk right now, but um, I guess at this point, I don't have anything else to uh, share on here. We can just take any additional questions that um, might be coming up. Uh, one thing to mention included in the box is, so the lens cover, uh, this yeah. is a magnetic lens cover. Uh, it sits it sits perfectly over the lens, but then you'll see the cutout here allows you to know whether or not your microphone is muted, whether Bluetooth is active. If the light is green, that means you're currently in an active um, uh, yeah, conference call on, on Teams or, or uh, Zoom. Um, and then obviously included in the box, obviously, as Eric just said, so this is the remote. Um, if you all can take a look, you see that it's pretty straightforward. Um, and we covered the other things that are in the box. So um, what we did forget to show was the uh, the video resolution at a distance. Can you, uh, are yeah. you set up to do that? Yeah, so yeah, so let's do this. Um, so I'll show, I'll do a couple of things. Let me, let me zoom out all the way as if we were in that huddle space or in that, um, in uh, maybe that tighter meeting space. And so what I want to do is get into that position where I'm about 12 inches. My, my shoulder right now is, is 12, roughly 12 inches from the video bar. Uh, and I am out um, about a foot and a half or, or two feet from the center of the lens. And you can see that I am in the shot, um, really in the shot with no issues. So if I'm looking at a display on the, on the, uh, in the meeting booth or the, uh, the huddle space, uh, you don't have any problem seeing me here. Um, so then the next thing what I want to do is I'm going to walk towards the back of my room here and you're going to see a little sign. I want you to listen to my voice as I, as I walk and turn my back towards you and continue to walk towards the little, what would be a whiteboard. <laughs> uh, so uh, what I want to show you here today is as I, I continue to talk, my voice should still be very intelligible and you can understand exactly what I'm saying to you while I'm looking at this piece of paper on the wall. Now what this piece of paper is, um, 
is this is telling you uh, some specific information. Eric, is this, can you, uh, I just wanna make sure, can we see this? Am I, yep. okay, so I am Zoom, I can't, I can't tell from that, but uh, yes. I can't see on my screen, so. Um, JB, are you still on the call? Yes, I am. Yes. Can you tell me what this actually says? Can you read this? Is this legible? Yes, it is. Bose BB1, one and a half inch tall at 15 feet. Yeah, so the text size is one and a half inches tall, which is about the height of what an average person will write on a whiteboard. So the image clarity out at 15 feet, you had a couple more feet. Now, I wasn't fully zoomed. Um, I had two more steps of zoom um, before we were at max zoom on that. So uh, very clear, uh, crystal clear. And my voice should have also been uh, intelligible, even though I've turned my back to you and walked across the room. So any questions on that? Anything else you'd like to see? Yeah, Michael, you are, you are correct. I mean, that's just the, the crux of the matter um, for a camera that is a part of an all-in-one device. Um, and again, you know, taking into consideration the target, you know, the target application of the, of the product, where a lot of the competition is not able to scale to those slightly larger rooms. Now, we definitely do not recommend anything past 20 feet, both from an optics or an, or a, 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 an audio capture perspective. Um, I'm sure people will try to push that limit, but we don't necessarily recommend anything past that. But when you consider the price point out of the box on the wall, one single cable to be up and running, obviously you've got to be able to dress the cables and do, do some integration. But at the end of the day, uh, this, this particular product is quick and as easy it is as it is to set up and to hit a particular price point. Uh, the optics, uh, of course, at 15 to 20 feet, are not going to be as crystal clear as a, a $2,500 uh, optical zoom, you know, PTZ camera. So uh, it is, it is all digital zoom. There's no, there's no optical zoom. So the, the camera is always in the wide field of view uh, setting. So. Great. And these are the camera controls for this system will look like in Zoom and in Teams. Uh, the, the, so as Michael, as far as controls within Team and Zoom, um, I, there's, I don't believe, yeah, there is no direct control within Teams or Zoom. Uh, but if you're using something like Zoom Rooms where you do have control, you know, you should be able to use the SNMP uh, API uh, and, and to be able to set up third-party control. But there's nothing directly out of the box that allows you to control the camera um, from team or from Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Does that, hopefully that answers your question. Looks like we have a question from Brian Wilson. What is the effective resolution of the camera when fully zoomed out? Just trying you guys answered. Yeah, uh, the it's next one really is zoomed out. It's 4K. I mean, the camera itself, but um, uh, in the full zoomed out. So for zooming in, I don't. I'm not sure what this resolution is when you're fully zoomed in. How? What uh, is the pixel resolution? Also, if any other attendees have any questions, please feel to raise, uh, raise your hand or ask within the Q&A or in chat. Uh, and to quickly answer Michael's question, so a Zoom room controller will not be able to turn on or off tracking. Um, so uh, again, the auto, auto framing function is available uh, as a as a control function, both from the remote or through the open API. Tracking on and off via the Zoom room or Teams user interface. Yes. 
Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, there's another one from Gerald Wallens. Are there any demo systems available that can be sent back or to purchase single SKUs at the demo cost? Uh, as far as demo units are concerned, we're working, um, obviously working with the, the team at Herman. Um, there will be a handful. And then there's also a demo program that will be uh, that will be coming online very soon. Um, and your account manager, your, your Herman account manager, uh, will be able to send you details on uh, demo purchase units. Uh, if you're interested in having one yourself for the office and then to take and demonstrate to other customers, or if you have specific you know, one-off uh, demonstration needs, there, uh, there is a, um, it's already in motion and demo units uh, for the team at Herman will be, if they're not already there, I'll have to check with um, uh, National Account Manager Dave Curran to find out, but the team, your, your team, the team at Herman will have some units available to do, you know, one, you know, to do a demo. So I'm getting a few answers to, to some of these questions that we didn't have. Um, we can send out an email here um, following up um, on that. Okay. Perfect. Um, if there's any more questions, please ask Q&A in the chat, or please raise your hand or we'll ask mm -hmm. over the mic. Okay, yeah. And Gerald, yeah, okay. Got it. Okay, chat. Okay. Understood. Uh, Unless there's any more questions, um, everybody, if you're interested in a BB1, please feel free to reach out to your sales manager or visit our website, hermanproav.com. Um, do you guys feel like this is a good stopping point? I think on questions, yeah, anybody have questions, please raise your hand. For everyone, um, unless, you guys have anything else to in, uh, input? Thank you for attending. We'll post this webinar tomorrow for in our blog tomorrow afternoon. Awesome. And and JP, are you the best person for us to um, send an email with any answers that we have uh, follow up to? Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I can. Definitely, um, well. Great. Great. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Aaron, Eric, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye.